much for more on what we might expect at this year's Summit of the Americas. We're joined by Mark Weisbrot. He's co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research here in Washington. Uh, historic, the inclusion of Cuba. Uh, can we expect much from this? What, what are your thoughts? No, I don't think we can expect much because after the uh, Obama administration decided to impose sanctions on Venezuela, that really took away everything and more than everything that they got from beginning the normalization of process. Well, let me go Cuba. there because that was going to be my next question. It, it seemed like a reset moment. All of a sudden they could come, the embracing of the hemisphere, and then the Venezuela move. And the backlash, I think they almost were caught off guard by it, but they probably no. shouldn't have been. No, I think they live in a bubble. I mean, they really didn't see it. And then, they, you know, they said, you know, because of the law in the United States, in order to issue that executive order implementing the sanctions, President Obama had to put in writing that, you know, that this was a national emergency in the United States caused by Venezuela and that it was an extraordinary threat to the national security of the United States. Now, after the entire hemisphere uh, made a lot of noise about that, statements from everybody in the hemisphere, from UNASUR, from the community of Latin American and Caribbean nations, which includes everybody uh, except the United States and Canada, saying that he should rescind the order. Okay, so they're trying to backpedal, and the White House says, well, we didn't really mean, uh, no, there's really no threat. Well, what did they say? And what does that say about the rule of law in the United States? I mean, that's in that law. He has to make that statement because you're not supposed to put unilateral sanctions on another country. It violates the OAS charter. You have to actually have a real national security threat. So it's all, uh, the president can just completely disregard the law. What kind of message does that send when they're trying to lecture the rest of the hemisphere about the rule of law? Well, and the hemisphere is, is, is not particularly fond of the lectures. They've been hearing them for a long time. There's a lot of built up animosity through the years, right? So if they're going to ease, tamp things down with Cuba, this backfires on them, doesn't it? Really it really backfired, and it's more than just the, you know, Everybody likes to say, oh, it's just the past. It's the very recent past, okay? I mean, in April of 2013, the United States was the only country in the world that refused to recognize the results of the Venezuelan elections. In 2009, when everybody in the hemisphere wanted to take this new president as somebody who was really going to be different, the United States did everything it could to support, to, to make sure that the military coup in Honduras against a democratically elected government succeeded. And then they want, went on to legitimate that government by supporting elections that nobody else in the world recognized. So it, this is a process that's been going on from summit to summit. And this one isn't any different. Obama thought, well, I'm going to give them a Christmas present you know, in December. I'm going to finally end 50 years of the embargo. And now everything's going to be different. Well, there was a chance that that could be something different. But what he really showed, and what this government really showed, by those Venezuela sanctions, no, this isn't any different. It's not a new strategy. It's not a new approach. If we're uh, trying to improve relations with Cuba, it's just because we decided that the old uh, the embargo didn't work, and maybe we're more likely to try and get rid of the uh, to succeed in getting rid of the Cuban government by uh, increasing commercial relations. That's how the government see it. You know, there's a huge gap between the, what the governments in Latin America see and what you see in the media because they're paying much closer attention, and they know what's going on, and they see what the United States has been doing. It's been hostile to all the left governments, really, uh, for the last 15 years. How does it get back on track uh, with the, these governments in the hemisphere? I mean, is, is this a chance to, uh, for the president to mend fences at all, or? He could try. He had a really good chance in 2009. He was welcomed, and everybody thought it was a new era until that coup in Honduras, and that really opened everybody's eyes. That's why you have the community of Latin American and Caribbean states without the United States and Canada, because the U.S. manipulated the Organization of American States to block them from taking stronger action to return the elected president to office. So this is a whole series of things, and uh, President Obama would really have to make a break. It would have to be more like you know, Nixon's trip to China in 1972, which wasn't just about restoring diplomatic relations and beginning commercial relations. It was also about recognizing a new reality. We're about out of time. Uh, your takeaway from the summit, what, what would be the headline uh, once it's over? Well, we don't know because there are still some things that have to happen. But I think it's not going to change this relationship, which is very bad. It's probably worse uh, for Obama than it was under uh, President Bush in terms of 
his isolation in the hemisphere. Mark Weisbrot, thanks so much for coming in. Thank Appreciate you. It.